Well, the political fallout does continue for state Republicans tonight. Five candidates for governor are in jeopardy right now of being kicked off the ballot. The State Elections Bureau recommends the five candidates, including frontrunner James Craig, be removed from the ballot over fraudulent petition signatures. The result, Craig Perry Johnson, Mike Brown, Donna Brandenburg, and Michael Markey Jr. don't have the required number of signatures to run. As Republicans pledge to fight this, Craig contends somebody wanted him out of the race. I can't prove anything right now, but I'm going to get to the bottom of it because they wanted me out. This process is so rife with forgery and fraud. There's no way that Craig gets on the ballot. A hearing on the recommendations will be held on Thursday. And if the Board of Canvassers agrees, it would be a major shakeup in Republican efforts to unseat Governor Whitmer. But tonight, there are a lot of questions about who gathered these signatures. Fox News' Charlie Langton joins us live with more. Charlie, what's going on behind here? Uh, well, I have no idea. I, mean, I don't think anybody really does. But the focus, I can tell you, though, is on fraud. And it's shifting from validating these signatures to fraud. But let me tell you what happened. The Bureau of Elections, they identified about 30 petition circulators. Everybody know how you get on the ballot? You've got to get, if you want to run for governor, just get 15,000 signatures, valid signatures, and you can get on the ballot. But it's a process that now has going to be, it's going to be scrutinized tremendously because, as you said, five of these Republican candidates they didn't get enough signatures because most of them, Chief Craig's case, for example, about half of the signatures that he turned in were fraudulent. I talked to Jamie Rowe. Jamie Rowe, now all we have to disclose that he is actually working for a candidate, Kevin Rinke. But before that, he worked for Secretary of State Candace Miller, and he's been a political consultant for years. And he says one of the real problems here is that a lot of campaigns pay people to go out, circulators to go out to collect these signatures. And he says that that's the problem. The cost is tremendous. Jamie, how much is it? Right now, the going rate, uh, in my understanding, what's being advertised out there is somewhere between $12 and $20 per signature. What purpose does it serve? Well, the requirement that you have to get petition signatures to get on the ballot, I think it's a good one because it, it is designed to be a test of your organization to show that you have people all over the state that will go out and ask people to sign your petitions. And it shows that you have a modicum of support. Assuming these petition signatures are fraudulent, who should investigate? What's the process? They, they should be investigated. I feel sorry for these candidates that 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 got duped uh, in, into hiring these fraudsters to some degree. And I think it's a requirement of the Secretary of State to sort of gather the information or the candidates themselves to gather the information to turn it over either to a county prosecutor or the attorney general. Can you make any legitimate argument to allow these five candidates to be on the ballot if in fact these signatures are fraudulent no i mean quite plain and simply no and it, it's unfortunate and i feel bad for these campaigns but the fact of the matter is you should have quality control in your petition process that would have caught this early the buck stops with the candidate uh, amen it, absolutely right it does why did this happen I think it happened because there is so much money being thrown around right now at sort of this vagabond um, group that is the paid petition circulator uh, industry. And they found it easier to have four or five guys sitting around a table signing petitions than going out and actually asking people to, to, to sign them. All right, so I wanted to figure out who are these people. So Matt Phillips and I from Fox 2, we went out. We went to Royal Oak. We went to Troy. We went to the west side of Detroit. We knocked on doors, made telephone calls, trying to find the people that the Department of Elections, the Bureau of Elections, I should say, identify. We didn't just track these people down. These are the people that have been identified. And we tried to find four or five people. Well, as soon as we got close, they took off. And we tried, made a lot of calls, no answers, shocking. Now, the procedure now, according to a statement from the Secretary of State, is that the Bureau of Elections, the focus before this, again, the procedure, the focus before, was to validate these signatures. They determined the signatures were not valid because of fraud. So now, the Bureau of Elections, assuming the Board of Canvassers on Thursday says, yeah, it's no good, these people are off the ballot, They'll now do an investigation, Bureau of Elections, for fraud. And if they find fraud, 
they will turn it over to the Attorney General, that would be Dana Nessel's office, for possible prosecution. So this story is not ending right now. Next step, the, this will all be certified by the Bureau uh, Board of Canvassers, then it's on Thursday, and then likely there'll be an investigation into fraud, and if there's fraud that's found, it'll go to the Attorney General. Phew, that's a lot of work, but again, it shouldn't have happened. You have to see your campaign. Signatures are important. I'll send it back to you guys. We're live out here. Well, as you know, I know you've been talking to the chief, uh, the former police chief. I talked to the former police chief yesterday on the 10 o'clock show here. Uh, I think he would argue the buck doesn't stop with a candidate. It stops with people who are in charge of collecting sound signatures. And if a company has some kind of other uh, thing going on that could be corrupt, that isn't necessarily the candidate's fault. It's the candidates. Listen, if I'm running, if my name's on the ballot, it's my fault. If I hire bad people, listen, Jimmy Rowe put it one way. And listen, if you're fraud, it's hard to figure it out. A lot of people say, and this is not just candidates for governor. I, I think we're going to find, in fact, I've already talked to a couple of consultants already today for elections not involving the governor. And they hired the same people. I'm not going to use the name right now because... These are allegations of fraud. But the bottom line here is if your name is on the ballot, you have to make sure that the people you hire know what they're doing. And if they certify that the election, the signatures they get are good, well, that's a good thing. It takes a lot of stress away from the campaign. But the bottom line is you got to know who you're hiring. And Jamie Rose said it. This is kind of a test case to see how you can manage your campaign. Now, listen, I get it. These people, I think, were duped. They got these people together and they were fraudulent people. This is a criminal activity. And all of us can be a victim of crime at some point. It's not totally our fault. But again, unfortunately, you can sue them maybe. Maybe these circulators will go to jail or prison. Who knows? But the bottom line here, your name, all these five people likely and other candidates will not be on the ballot. And when you start the campaign, you want to be on the ballot. And if you don't get on, it's a loss. Sad, terrible, but I think there will be a big investigation to figure out what really went wrong and how we can prevent this from happening again. It is an uphill battle, but one that uh, we talked to James Craig. He says he's willing to take on and we'll see what happens in this next chapter. Charlie Langton for us live. Thank you.